Before we begin the video, we would like your help in planning the future of visual by taking a short survey to share your requirements and expectations of the software so that we can develop the next innovation in design software. Scan the QR code or use the link in the description below. In today's video, we will look at how to modify the size and shape of rooms, structures, and calculation zones in the visual lighting software. First, let's review how to modify the height of a calculation zone after you have added it to your design. For this example, we want to move a calculation zone from the floor up to desk height using the zone's properties. From the Home tab on the ribbon, you will select the Properties command. Left-click on a calculation point or on the edge of a calculation zone you want to change. The properties for the calculation zone will appear in the right side panel. Now, change the height from 0 to 2.5 to move the calculation up to desk height. Notice that the calculation zone has changed height in the design environment. Now, let's review how to modify the height of a calculation zone using the Move command. We will move a calculation zone from the floor up to desk height. From the Home tab on the ribbon, you will select the Move command. Left-click on a calculation point or the edge of a calculation zone you want to change. Right-click to complete your selection. Left-click to select a base point at the location of the calculation zone. Now change to an elevation view. If you set your snap to an increment of 0.5 feet in enable orthogonal mode, you can easily move the calculation zone to 2.5 feet using the relative coordinate feedback on the status bar. Left click to set the destination point for the calculation zone at 2.5 feet. The distance can also be set using the coordinate system. While in the Move command, after selecting the base point, type in the coordinate field at the bottom using the at symbol followed by 0, 0, 2.5. The at designation means the item will be moved relative to its current location, which in this case is 2.5 in the Z axis. Press Enter to see the zone move to the correct height. Let's review how to modify the shape of a calculation zone using the stretch command. From the Modify tab, select the stretch command. To increase or decrease the width or length of a calculation zone, left-click to select the edge of the calculation zone you wish to change. Notice the two endpoints have highlighted. Right click to complete the selection. Left click to select a base point to start the stretch, then move the mouse and you can track the change in distance with the relative coordinates in the status bar. Left click the mouse at the desired distance change to complete the stretch command and reshape the calculation zone. To further modify the current boundaries of a calculation zone, we will left-click to select just a corner of the calculation zone, then right-click to complete the selection. Next, left-click to set the base point anywhere on the drawing. Finally, using the mouse or absolute or relative coordinates in the command line, we can adjust the shape of the calculation zone. One thing to keep in mind is that calculation zones in visual must not cross over themselves and must remain planar, or in other words, flat on at least one of the axes. For instance, in our calculation zone, we can make adjustments as long as the object doesn't cross over itself, which will produce an error. Let's review how to modify the shape of a calculation zone using the new edit command. From the Modify tab, select the Edit command. Click the edge where you would like to add a vertex. 
Note that you can only select in the center of two existing vertices and you can only add one vertex at a time. Right click to complete your selection. Next, select your base point with left click. We will select the new vertex as the base point. You can use the mouse to left click and select a destination point or you can enter coordinates in the command line to adjust the shape of the calculation zone. At this point, the edit command will allow you to add another vertex to reshape the calculation zone further, or you can right click to end the edit command. One thing to keep in mind is that calculation zones in visual must not cross over themselves and must remain planar, or in other words, flat on at least one of the axes. For instance, in our calculation zone, we can make adjustments as long as the object doesn't cross over itself, which will produce an error. For this reason, we recommend working from a plan view for horizontal calculation zones and the appropriate view for a vertical one. Let's review how to modify the height, width, or length of a room or structure using the pull command. For this example, we will work with a room and a structure. The room is green and the structure is blue. First, we will change the height of the room using the pull command. From the modify tab, select the pull command. Left click on the ceiling surface of the room, then right click to complete the selection. You can adjust the room height by manually moving the mouse and using the global and relative coordinates on the status bar to track the distance change based on mouse location. You can also enter a value in the command line in the bottom left corner. An important thing to remember for using the command line for the pull command is that the command works in the direction of the normal, or in other words, in the direction that the surfaces are facing. For a room, the normal is facing inward, so a positive number will decrease the height, while a negative number will increase the height. For a structure, the normal is facing outwards, so entering a positive number will increase the height. You can also use the pull command to modify the other dimensions of a room or structure. If you click on the wrong surface, you can click the same spot to cycle through to the desired surface. Let's review how to modify the shape of a solid, room, or structure using the stretch command. From the modify tab, select the stretch command. Select the edges of the wall with a selection window. Right-click to complete the selection. Left-click to select a base point to start the stretch. Move the mouse and track the change in distance with a relative coordinates of the status bar. Left-click the mouse at the desired distance change to complete the stretch command and reshape the room. When working with 3D rooms or structures, it's best to think three-dimensionally and make sure to select points in multiples of two to ensure that the changes can be made. One thing to keep in mind is that solids in visual must not cross over themselves and must remain planar, or in other words, flat on at least one of the axes. For instance, in our flat solid surface, we can make adjustments as long as the object doesn't cross over itself as the surface is planar since there's no change on the z-axis. Let's review how to modify the shape of a room or structure using the new edit command. From the modify tab, select the edit command. Click the edge where you would like to add the vertices to. Note that you can only select one side to add vertices to at a time and that it will always add the top and bottom vertices in a pair with a line running in between when not along an edge. Right click to complete the selection. You can use the mouse to left click and select a destination point or enter coordinates in the command line to adjust the shape of the calculation zone. The edit command will allow you to add another vertex to shape the calculation zone or you can right click to end the edit command. 
One thing to keep in mind is that solids and visual must not cross over themselves. It must remain planar, or in other words, flat on at least one of the axes. For instance, with our flat solid surface, we can make adjustments because the surface remains planar, as there's no change in the Z axis, as long as the object doesn't cross over itself, which will produce an error. You can use this same method of adding vertices to the top of the room to create an A-frame roof.